Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media I am Dr Nick Nick I'm a cardiologist from Houston Texas in this presentation we are going to be talking about the blood pressure medicines actions and their side effects so let us begin with the feature presentation the blood pressure medications are available in various uh, classes of drugs the most important of which are water pills to begin with we have lasix hydrochlorothiazide you can follow my arrow here we have water pills lasix hydrochlorothiazide torsamide or bumetidine all these water pills work on the kidney renal tubules as you can see the furosemide works on the convoluted proximal tubule and thiazides work here hydrochlorothiazide and of course the other ones spironolactone work on the distal tubules they remove salt and water and also that will help to relax the blood vessels when the salt is removed from the blood vessels it lowers the blood pressure however it uh, the side effects of water pills would be lowering of the potassium and magnesium level and because of the lowering of the potassium and magnesium levels people can develop irregular heart beats they can also develop dehydration if they are not uh, taking adequate fluids while they are on water pills the second class of drugs are known as beta blockers beta blockers you are quite familiar with them they are the metoprolol atenolol coreg or bistolic and there are a whole number of other ones but basically the beta blockers act on the heart they reduce the contractility of the heart muscle they reduce the heart rate they reduce the resistance to the blood flow across the blood vessels so by doing so it reduces the blood pressure it reduces the heart rate and reduces the strain on the heart muscle by the same token beta blockers are known to cause low blood pressure if uh, the medication is too much it it doesn't need to changes in potassium level this is an error it does not affect with the kidney function some people can have allergic reaction the main side effect of beta blockers is fatigue impotence and also slow heart rate especially in patients who already have heart rhythm problems let's talk about ace and arbs you have heard of these terms ace stands for angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors and arbs are the angiotensin receptor blocking agents so the ace and the ace inhibitors are in the category of lisinopril ramipril and vasotec these are the ace inhibitors and losartan talmasartan and divan and a bunch of other ones are in the angiotensin receptor blocker group basically the liver produces angiotensinogen the kidneys produce renin because of increased blood pressure and because of a constriction of the blood vessels this renin acts on the angiotensinogen in the lungs and converts that into angiotensin 1 angiotensinogen is converted by renin into angiotensin 1 and in the lungs the angiotensin converting enzyme converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 which is one of the most potent vasoconstrictors increasing the blood pressure so by using ace inhibitors we can block the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 thus reduce the resistance in the blood vessels they can also lead to low blood pressure fatigue and increase potassium levels and of course some worsening of the kidney function which we saw on the other previous slide which should have been here so that's the action of angio ace inhibitors whereas the A arbs work one step lower that is they don't block the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 but the angiotensin receptor blockers block the action of the angiotensin 2 on the blood vessels namely the AT1 receptors and AT2 receptors leading to dilatation of the blood vessels reduction in the peripheral resistance and thus reducing the blood pressure 
the ACE inhibitors had a, had a problem with dry cough due to release of bradykinin in, in the lungs, whereas we don't see that problem with the angiotensin II receptor blockers. Again, they can lead to low blood pressure, fatigue, and also they can lead to salt retention because of the vasodilatation. The next group of drugs are known as the alpha blockers. These are the blood vessels which act on the alpha receptors on the blood vessels, mainly the small arteries and arterioles in the entire body. They act on the alpha receptors and thus blocking the action of uh, the adrenaline and thus reducing the resistance and increasing the blood flow across the blood vessels. It improves a heart function. It, uh, di di it dilates the blood vessels directly. It can lead to low blood pressure. Some of them may have lethargy, especially associated with clonidine, which acts on the brain to block these alpha receptors in the entire body. And it can also lead to extreme weakness. Sometimes we can see wide fluctuations in the blood pressure among patients who are taking alpha blockers. Hence, the blood pressure needs to be monitored very closely. So ladies and gentlemen, the next group of drugs are hydralazine and nitroglycerin. Again, these also act on the blood vessels, but the difference is that uh, the nitroglycerin acts mainly on the venous side, the blue veins that are depicted here, whereas the hydralazine acts on the arterial side, but nonetheless, they do reduce the blood pressure, they relax the blood vessels, reduce the resistance, and improve the heart function. They are not only used in patients with hypertension, but more often they are used in patients with heart failure and in patients with the angina for relief of pain with the nitroglycerin. The side effects of the hydralazine is an increased reflex tachycardia, increase in heart rate. With the beta blockers, we saw there was a decrease in heart rate, whereas with hydralazine, we can see an increase in heart rate, which may be kind of sometimes harmful to patients with uh, coronary artery disease who may not be able to tolerate increase in heart rate. Same thing with nitroglycerin, it can increase the heart rate, but the nitroglycerin also gives headache which is uh, an annoying uh, symptom, which can be controlled with uh, like Tylenol. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a quick synopsis of the high blood, pressure, high blood pressure medications, their actions and their side effects. I hope this has been educational to you. We have more than 250 educational videos in the field of cardiology. Please do watch them and please, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. I will see you.